I'm recording at this time, so I can post it somewhere. Alright, it was a dark and stormy night when I was driving down a dark and windy road, unaware of the ill-fated adventure that was waiting for me. I already read this once, so... It began in the form of a blinding flash of light that assaulted my senses and sent me veering off the road and into a road sign. Stunned, I crawled from the car with my heart racing in my ears. I squinted in the dark to try and read the sign that I had plowed into. It said, Hotel, One Mile. And off in the distance behind it, I could see the hotel's warm, inviting glow. The journey to reach it was short, but by the time I stood in the doorway, I was dripping like a soaked dog and feeling much the same. The hotel was very 50s in its design, but at the same time, it looked clean and new in an eerie way. Shrugging it off, I realized that no one was around. The porter or clerk I had hoped would assist me were nowhere to be seen. In fact, no one was around at all. Hey, is anybody here? I called out as I peered around the corner, hoping to see a head poke out from the back room but no one answered. At a bit of a loss, I decided to check out the elevator to check the next floor up. Once the elevator stopped moving and opened its doors, I strolled down the hall and read the numbers on each door. As I passed through 2018, I was... stopped short by the sound of a woman's scream. I pressed my ear to the door and tried to listen to the sound inside, but there was nothing but silence. I pulled the door handle and discovered that it was locked tight and against any jiggler twist. Sure. Concerned, I threw caution to the wind and kicked the door in to reveal the most bizarre room I had ever seen. There was a lantern on the desk with its power turned all the way up, but that couldn't explain the amazing volume of light that filled the room. It wasn't until my eyes were just had adjusted to the light that I could see that everything around me was covered in snow. Frost climbed the walls like ivy and fresh down of snow covered the floor and furniture. My first thought was that it had been... Bleh. My first thought was it had to be some special effect. My second thought was that it was time for me to leave quickly. One word. I was going to do just that, but painting hanging on the wall caught my eye and paralyzed me where I stood. It was a picture of a frozen sea, and something about it made the hairs on the back of my neck stand on end with fright. This feeling grew worse when, at that very moment, snow began to fall inside the room. The shock of the whole scene was overwhelming, and it would have kept me paralyzed if it hadn't been for a burst of courage from within that, from within, from within that overcame my fear and sent me into a dead run out the door and back to the elevator. I pressed the button to return to the ground floor, expecting a welcome party of show producers and hotel staff to be waiting for me there. Okay. So here we are on the second floor, I believe is what the elevator said. This is the first game in a long series. Um, I already said this once, which is why it's probably a little disjointed, but I wasn't recording it then. Um, this is a very old game. Uh, I don't remember how old, but it's early 2000s. And it is old and janky. Um, it's a decent hidden object puzzle game. Obviously, the uh, text could have used some editing. Uh, editor is me normally, and seeing stuff that I can't change with mistakes like that kind of gets under my skin a little. Um, but this game is actually pretty good for a hidden object puzzle, and I like the story, so that's why I'm playing through. Um, and somebody's banging at my door, and they better stop. That's not part of the game. That's part of my life. Alright, so... So... My son needs to go ask their father, and we need to go in here. Oh, let's see, why is it paused? Yes, this is a standard hidden object puzzle. There's a list on the side, and I need to find this list to go to the next stage. I only need to find five of these items, though. It'll get higher the longer it goes on, and there's bonus items. Now, oh, that was creepy. There was somebody in the game that coughed and I thought that was somebody. No, that's not an okay noise either. Shush! I'm talking. Um, bonus items. 
which are over here. I don't remember what I was saying. I get very distracted very easily. That's why I play hidden object puzzles. At any rate, so as hidden object puzzles go, this is old school. The thing on the side, um, the just the names, the no real kind of qualifier. Late dropping. Um, and also in this game, when find items. I don't remember this many sound effects the last time I played. Um, when you find items, you don't keep any of them to use later. That's, that means it's really old. It's also very tiny on my screen, so I might have a hard time finding some of these, but I just did this puzzle, like, I don't know, an hour ago while I was trying to get my streaming stuff set up. So I might be okay, she says, then not being able to find anything. Oh, there's a crying fan. And that is a microphone, and that is a stack of books, and I need a pipe, oh there's a button. I usually I play these games full screen, but um, I haven't figured out how to do that and still see the chat window, so uh, I'm playing it small and it is tiny. Okay. So now to get to the next level, I have to play one of these games or go in the energy room, which I think I shall do because that's fun. There's like the energy room in the five or six mini games and you have to play them at every level. Which is harder than it looks. Very good at it. Wow, okay, I'm exceptionally bad at it. <clears throat> wow, that, oh my gosh, that's terrible. That's the right <laughs> And this is the, like, the, the, you win? Sure, this is like the first level of it. it gets, all of them get harder as they go on. Um, yeah, that was pretty sad. Rope game! Okay. Ta-da! See, it's very easy to start with. Wow, that's very loud. Let me see if I can fix... Alright. Actually, I remember, if I try to fix it now, it will make me replay the whole thing, uh, the whole, um, story over again. So let's just go to the next... We're supposed to be going down because we're frightened and we're trying to leave the hotel. But no, we're going up to floor two, I think, or three. When the elevator doors opened, I bolted into the corridor and stopped abruptly as I viewed the space around me. I wasn't on the ground floor. The elevator had let me out somewhere totally different. Before I could get back inside, the elevator doors sealed and wouldn't open again no matter what I did to the button. Buttons. So after a while, I had to give up and try to get my bearings and find another way out. All of the doors here started with the number three, so it seemed like it was the third floor, even though that didn't make any sense. I was positive that I felt the elevator go down. The door to room 3027 was unlocked, so I pushed the door open and slowly crept inside, unsure of what to expect after the first room. There was the same furniture and arrangements in this room as there had been in the winter room, and even the same machinery and crates. Thankfully, this room was a lot livelier than it than it looked. Wait. Thankfully, this room was a lot livelier, livelier in that it looked as though the plants placed around it had been brought in from a meadow that afternoon. As I looked around the room, as I looked around, the room began to brighten as if on a spring day. The very air coming alive with bees and seeds drifting in the gentle breeze. A breeze? Where was it coming from? Surely it was coming from a fan. Somewhere in this room. I had dedicated myself to trying to find this mystery when I discovered something else. A red cross painted on the wall. My attention was fixed on it, observing the hastily drawn nature that was evident in the two quick strokes that had made it. There was also another painting here this time of a blooming orchard in the midday sun, and when I looked closer, I could see that the, the budding branches were growing up and out of the frame. 
Suddenly, I spotted something staring at me from the end of the hall with, a, with small glinting eyes. It took me a moment to realize it, but it was a cat. I crept towards it slowly to keep from scaring it away, but it seemed that just by moving towards it, I prompted it to run off in another, into another room. Desperate for the company of another living soul, I ran after the cat without thinking of where it could be leading me. The room the cat had run into was different from the previous two rooms that I had been in. It had twin beds set side by side with a small nightstand in between them. Where was the cat? I didn't see it run out, so it had to be in there somewhere, but too well hidden for the likes of me. Turning my search to the halls, I walked all the way up the corridor and back to the elevator I had started from. Out of futility, I tried pressing the call button, and to my amazement, it worked. It rumbled back up to me, and the door sprang open, allowing me to get in and press the button for the ground floor again. It couldn't take me to the same floor twice, I was sure. As it transported me to my next destination, I replayed the events in my mind, wondering about the hotel's lack of staff and guests and the oddities of the spring and winter rooms. What was going on? My thoughts didn't get very far before they were interrupted by the elevator's bell announcing that it had arrived where it, it had intended to abandon me next. So obviously this writing needs a lot of line editing, but it's not a terrible, like, short story kind of setup. Um, I think that the developers would have been better off splitting the two stories or like this section, for example, splitting it in two, doing the, I got to the floor, I went to the room, and then maybe cutting it when you go in the next room or when you go back to the elevator, like something like that, to keep the continuity better. But the continuity isn't great in general because I think they wrote the story and made the game a little bit separate. The rooms, I mean, obviously that last one was winter, it was snowing, but they don't look a lot like what they're described to look like. And um, obviously, since this is a really old game, they have like a lot of just random stuff thrown in the rooms in weird spots where it wouldn't normally be in reality. So that's something that they do change in later games, but that is something odd about the game. They also have more rooms. Um, than they talk about in the story, which would be cool if they had talked about all of them, but we will do the spring room first, since that's where we went in the story. And it is the same room, it's just uh, spring instead of winter. So now we need two teapots, a saw, an egg, a trumpet. Oh, I know where the egg is. Yeah, see, I just played this not that long ago. Um, Oh, I never adjusted the volume. I have ADHD, and I'm going to forget this a lot. Oh, oh my gosh. That's annoying. I mean, it's supposed to be, like, creepy. Where's the other teapot? Okay, that one I didn't like. My floor in my office is very squeaky. That's not a photo. And if you see something, and I am missing it, I don't know how you would figure out how to point that out to me. Oh, there's a, oh I should be looking for the uh, uh, reception bell. That is a cup of tea. And those are gizzards. The bonus items just give you more time. It takes 20 minutes. I don't know how it could possibly take 20 minutes to find stuff in these games. Unless you're really bad at finding puzzles. Oh, there's a trumpet. Wow, it's a lot harder to find stuff when it's so small. All right. Now we will go to the bridal suite. Wow, I forgot about this room. This is... Whoa, okay, sure. Bird bath? Why not? A box of some sort. I don't know what that's supposed to be. File cabinet? Oh, looks like a file cabinet. Alright, so what are our actual things? Phone, ring, butterfly, hat, four stars. Let's start with those. Butterfly. Star. 
star. Oh my gosh, that's tiny. I knew that star was there. I don't know where the other one is. Uh, and a red and blue is over here somewhere. Yep. This is also my first time doing this, so I currently have it running at in the little window, but then in front of me is a big window, so I can see the screen twice in spots, which is slightly distracting. Oh, there's the ring. Oh. Good, I didn't have to find that other star. Alright, so now I need to charge my energy again, and we have Word Machine, which I hate, so let's do energy. Let's see if I can get a better score this time. No, oh, that was bad. Aw, oh, I could have got a whole bunch of that and bought on a little longer. Alright, but... Was that better or worse? <gasps> okay, that's better. I did a lot better with my hit percentage. Alright, word machine is annoying. So, you have to catch the letters with the magnet. You would think that the, the ones at the bottom would be easier to catch because they're going slow. The ones in the middle aren't bad, but the ones on top are the easiest. Like, and the ones I wasn't even... Yeah, no, that was, that was just bad. Okay. But the ones on the bottom are the first ones. Alright, we need to shut the volume. That is way too loud. Somebody remind me to do the volume. Now we're going to the next floor, which is number three, even though that was number three. The elevator doors opened to reveal a man standing on the other side. He was dressed in black with a large gold cross hanging around his neck. My first, my first thought was he was a priest, but after the events in the other rooms, I suspected that he was an actor. He didn't seem at all surprised to see me standing there, though I was certainly surprised to see him. Hello, he said calmly, staring directly at my eyes. Where am I? I asked, too amazed to think of anything else. Are you looking for your room? He asked, as though he was completely ignoring my question. Yeah, I suppose, I said, though I still wanted to leave. Shall we go? He asked. I'll take you to your room. Well, that was a pleasant turn of events. The priest didn't seem at all like a monster, so maybe I had just gotten a little lost. My mood was so improved in his company that by the time we had reached what was to be my room, I had gathered the courage to ask him about the room. However, before I could say a thing, he cut me off and said, You should stay in your room to avoid any accidents. Accidents? I don't like the sound of that. What exactly do you mean? I asked. Warily and, oh, asked warily and observed that the stranger's face became more serious as he answered. Time beyond eternity. Time comes. Eternity remains. I beg you, stay in your room. He warmed up again and added, Besides, it's just for the night. Stay in your room. Something very strange was heard happening there as that was giving me the distinct impression that this priest was trying not to frighten me before he left me to explore my room. It was very different from all the others in that there was a drum surrounded by candles in the center that looked as, that looked as if it had been placed, been made with animal hides drawn tightly over it. The whole set made me think of a shaman. Sure. A uh, persistent glimmer around the room brought my attention to the fact that knives were strewn all over the place, while all around me the penetrating eyes of mounted animals stared down like they were wa waiting to attack. Slowly, I backed away towards the door, held by the fear that if I turned my back to those creatures, it would be the last time. I must have been losing my mind. As I made my slow escape, things only got crazier, when I was suddenly rocked back and forth by powerful gusts of wind, even though the window was closed. Finally, having more... 
finally having more of this adventure than I could handle, I lost my wits and slammed myself into the door a few times before I remembered that the door opened inward. <laughs> Clearing it open, I bolted into the hall with the unnatural gale slamming the door behind me. But I still wasn't alone. But the door was shut. The wind seemed to pass through it and followed me out. It was as cold as an arctic gale, raising goosebumps all the way up my arms as it harassed me. It was getting colder by the moment. That guy in the picture, by the way, does not look like a priest. He's even wearing a cross. There's a cross there. Unless that's a window. I can't tell. Oh, we gotta just fix the volume. I remembered that time. Uh, options. Sound volume? Yeah, let's turn that down just a little bit. Now kick me out. Yes, I want to load my previous game. Ugh, I'm do all over again. Yada yada yada. Priest is creepy. There's a cold wind. Okay. So now shaman. So all of your games in the Find It series, and I guess in general, tend to have some questionable content. This will be one of them. Also, this doesn't look anything like the room that was described, except it has, like, a couple of drum things and a weird fog, which also wasn't in the description. Alright, so we need a creepy hand, a key, and a compass. Now we need a barbecue fork, watch, paintbrush, and hammer. Barbecue, and a hammer. Watch. Is that a paintbrush? No, I think that's an inkwell. Da, 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 da. I've already forgotten what I'm looking for. Barbecue for. Nope. Paintbrush. <laughs> that's a seashell. The coughing sound effect is creepy. Oh, there's the barbecue fork. I guess. I don't know if that's actually what it's called. Film reel. Nope, that's a sun dial. That's a record. There are no cell phones in this game. It's very weird. I don't remember if there's any computers or not, but if they are, they are very old. There's like a... I don't actually know what that is. It looks like a tricorder. Um, like cassette tape. Fire alarm is at the top. Oh, there's a skull. I need a paintbrush and a film reel. Oh, there's a film reel. Technically, I could go to the other room, but I'm stubborn. Unless I really can't find it, I'm going to sit here and feel like find it. Or I could just use a hint. Is that a paintbrush? No. Oh, there it is. Sometimes things are sitting right in front of me and I don't see them, and sometimes these people hide this particular game especially. They hide things where you literally can't see them. Alright, ball and chain. Head for some reason. This kind of looks like a notebook. Maybe. Oh no, you know what that is? That's a tank. I bet that's a tank. I don't see one, but I bet that's what it is. Alright. Uh, so we need a seashell and a newspaper. Newspaper. Seashell. Bear. Feathers are usually tricky to find. Oh no, there we go. Or they're really easy to find. Apple. Popper. Popper like in um, Minions. Which was cute until it became an internet sensation and Everyone in the world was posting stupid memes with minions in them. Okay, not everyone in the world, just like middle-aged mothers. Which I am one of, but I don't do that. Uh, I got distracted. Spider. Find a spider. Or an apple. Oh, there's the apple right in front of me. See what I mean? Oh, there was a spider right above the apple. The other thing 
that happens in these games is you end up looking at specific places and then you miss stuff even though it's sitting right in front of you. I normally hate these games but this one's really easy. Is that still too loud or is that okay? I guess that's okay. For the moment, it's okay. Oh, this is a puzzle. Alright, 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 I got it. Wow, it's hard to see. Because it's so tiny on my end. I keep trying to use the scroll wheel to, uh, to move this up and down, but that you have to actually just hold the mouse here. You don't have to click on it. There's a couple of these paintings. They don't really have anything to do with the um, with the story, which is another thing that in later games of this type, they everything is related to the story, even if it doesn't really make sense. This is just a picture of I don't know if you can tell yet, kitty cat and a dude, and that's what. But like. I don't know if, like, they didn't have the money to get the actual assets, so they just, like, took pictures and, uh, the, oh, that's an edge piece. Uh -huh. No, it goes right there. Just dang it, me. Um. If, uh, they, please the scroll wheel. If they, like, recolored it or something, because it looks like this is an actual... Or maybe it's a photograph, and then they just made it look like an oil painting. That could be too. Or they just took like a painting and made it really blurry so no one would know what it was. One of those two things. But in this one, they added kitty cats. And the only thing you can see in the picture is kitty cats. Which I am okay with, because keys are awesome. See, look, here's the dude. Weird, right? You can see the cat perfect. This game has some weird choices. But it's not actually bad as games go. Can I not talk and think at the same time? That would be upsetting. There we go. Oh wait, I just had it. <laughs> See how many times I need to spin that around before I can actually put it where it goes. Why did that pause? Sorry about that. Annoying. Oh, I clicked on the other window. Wow. Here we go up another floor to floor four, even though I think in the story we're on floor five. Knowing that the elevator wouldn't take me to the ground floor, but hoping to find a place with place with an exit, I ran to it and rode up to another level with the fleeting hope that I had escaped the dreadful gale. I was approaching the first door when a chill blast a chill blasted me from behind as if the Arctic gale had only been delayed while waiting for the lift to follow me up in. As it chased me down the hall, I read the room numbers and tried their handles, only to be locked out again and again until I reached room number 4036. When the knob turned freely in my hand, I rushed inside, slammed the door behind me, and leaned against it until I was sure I was safe. The room I took shelter in appeared to be filled with film equipment. Cameras, records, and film reels were all laying around. There was also a pile of pictures laying on the table that piqued my interest. So I picked up the stack closest to me and sorted through it. They all seemed to be of the same person, a middle-aged man with a mustache that was dressed in classic 1950s attire. There were pictures of him having lunch, others of him talking to people, and photos of what seemed to be a mechanical drawing. But one photo caught my attention above the rest, a photo of him talking to the priest. 
I picked up another stack to look at, seeing that they were obviously taken with a pinhole camera hidden in different parts of the hotel. The guests in this room must have been following the man in these photos. I snooped around a bit more until I found an old tape recorder under the bed and a set of reel-to-reel tapes and then the reel-to-reel the real, then the real canister. With these items, I was able to set up the old tape player and listen to it. Work on the machine is almost done. Only a simulation of the weather conditions remain. It is really weird, but the stone statue, stone and statue work just fine. I made a breakthrough in science. Soon mankind will feel that which is eternity. Develop insubordination for time and deny all the laws of physics that govern us for so long. A great era is awaiting us. Only the weather is left. Judging by the point of view and the remembering and remembering the mechanical drawings I saw in one of the photos, I deduced that the voice from the tape belonged to the man that was being followed. Deep in thought about this, I started I stared at the table and Till a notebook that was almost completely hidden under a pile of papers caught my attention. There were only two pages in it that had been used at all, but what notes were present were very succinct. Succinct. Hang on, I need a drink. Okay. Respected physicist takes unconventional direction. Expulsion from the physicist society. Not allowed to conferences. Scandal with experiments in Germany. Relation with unknown creditors for experiments pursued by the church. When I finished reading it, I stood up and was partially engulfed by the arctic gale that I thought I had escaped in the hall. Time to go. See, the story's kind of interesting. I mean, wait, where are we supposed to go in this? Oh, the spy. That's right. I just read it. See, like, this doesn't look anything like what they just described. But what can you do, right? Uh, those looks like a pile of photos. This one? That's a dog. That thing goes to Marrakesh, I think they're called. And I don't see it. There it is. And a propeller. There it is. Okay. The real to real tape player is interesting because growing up when I did, a tape player played cassette tape. A tape player was not a real to real player. I don't actually know if that's what they called them because I am not old enough to have that. And there's a stopwatch. There's a lighter. And you need an apple. Apple, 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 apple. Why do I hear a pigeon? Why would there be a pigeon in here? Okay, telephone makes sense. Why would you have a pigeon in here? Wooden stamp? No. Wooden stamp? I didn't even see the wooden stamp. Oh, there it is. Why can't I find the apple or freaking cassette? I'm not looking for the cassette. That's why I can't find the cassette. Because that's it there. Mm-hmm. All right, I don't see the apple. Oh, it was an eaten apple. That's why I didn't see it. All right, should we do summer or banquet? Let's do summer. This is very pretty. All right. So we need some sort of... Oh, I was going to say plant, but I think that's the book. A caliper. Oh no, that's a folding rule. There's the 
compass. Folding ruler. There we go. Alright, handheld fan. Frog. Yeah, four. Where's the frog? There's a turtle. What do you turtles get? Handprint. There's a froggy. Is that a frog? No. Okay, um, Daisy. In there. Letter. Is that like a letter of the alphabet? Or of oh, the cards? Um, so you need a frog and a leather. Letter, not leather. We have a leather frog. Oh, there's a newt. Is that a frog? Yep, okay. It's a letter. Letters there, maybe that's what I mean. Is that it? Aha! That doesn't look like a letter. That looks like a clipboard. Oh! I did not even notice that there was a person here. Hello, person. Dreams with surfer. I also have dyslexia. <laughs> Hello, tree. <laughs> You're about to do graphic design for my singing stream. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Nice to see you. If you want to listen to my ramblingness. What on earth is that? Oh, I know what that is. It's a camera. Ha 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 ha. And in a box. There's no timestamps on these. I have no idea when you started talking to me. I wonder if there's a way to have a timestamp. I'm not looking at the website. I'm looking at whatever program this is. Um. Seashell. Seashell. This game has noise. That's so weird. Um, <laughs> turtle, I lost my train of thought. Oh, this game has a lag between things. So like if I click on this and then this was the other thing, I would have to wait until the, the, um, the first thing resolved before I could click on the next thing. That is a very old school thing. Usually, you could just click on things over and over and over. Matter of fact, in the newer games, there's usually Chivos for it. Oh, I hate word machines so much. These are fun. Getting a little bit trickier, but not too hard. Maybe I got good enough with this game that's not that hard anymore. Ah! Stupid thing. I can do this too, but I'm not sure. Can I move? No, I can't move it while it's dropping. Oh, I missed that time! You should be able to get stuff up on the, um, when it's coming up the other way. It's a magnet. It's just gonna pick up whatever it passes. And I lost. But I don't actually need to win. So weird, right? Oh, sorry, I was I was gone. Okay. By the time the elevator doors opened to a new floor with its familiar ding, I was feeling more confident that I could find some clue that would lead me to the exit. Determined to get out, I carried on with my search, starting with room 5045, which was the first room I found on that floor that wasn't locked. It was as casual as the other rooms, but seemed to be better equipped with home furnishings. There were lots of cabinets that were so stuffed full of papers that they were sticking out under the doors and must have spilled out over the tables a few times as well. I was flipping through those papers when I noticed the familiar symbol of a cross painted on the walls. 
This symbol seemed to be a fixture in every room, as if the residents were warding off evil spirits. Whatever the reason behind them, it was less absurd next to something else I saw hanging from the wall. I ran across the room to get a closer look, certain that my eyes were playing tricks on me. But getting closer didn't change anything that I saw. There was a calendar on the wall dated to the year 1957. I felt dizzy. This had to be a trick of some kind. Perhaps it was some kind of prank that someone had arranged all around this hotel. I ran up to the cupboards and began pulling cans of food off the shelves and read their expiration dates. They all read 1957. No one was that clever. No one. The hotel looked like it was from the 19 or from the 50s, but it also looked brand new and couldn't have been abandoned that long ago. My mind wandered back to the accident that had brought me here and the flash of light that it had caused. At first, I assumed it would have been a lightning strike that I had narrowly avoided, but now it couldn't be. With a sick feeling in the pit of my stomach that wasn't the blame of expired food, I searched the papers that had spilled over the desk in the hope of discovering some flaw in the hoax. It was then that I came across a very disturbing piece of paper, one that listed the names of several guests cross-referenced with a room number, 2018, 3027, 4036, and 5045. I had found each of those rooms unlocked in a disarray, which I just saw as a coincidence. But what if it wasn't? Suddenly the door opened, though there, no one was there that I could see. But I could feel it. Gail had returned. It smothered the room with its presence. It, its chill so cold that it that it bite at my exposed skin as it climbed up my body. I bolted out of the room and down the hall to the elevator, pressing at the call button again and again to no avail. Trapped, I turned around and looked back to the room I had fled from and saw, that, saw the gale in conflict with the warm air that filled the hall, creating a swirling and tangible border between the two. I don't know what this guy is thinking in the picture on the side here. It's kind of weird. Um, yeah, continuing on. So, I don't know which room we were in. Detective, maybe? Well, there's no food on the shelves in here, so I guess not. <clears throat> The fact that there was a calendar that was marked with the wrong date, that shouldn't be that scary. It looks like that. Oh, there we go. Lamp. Lamp. Um, cool. Death doodad. But, like, I don't know. No, that's a pen. That might be a pencil. Um... Yeah, I don't know. It, some of the stuff in this make a lot of sense, and some of the stuff in this do not make a lot of sense. Alarm clock, handcuffs. It seems like the first draft of a really good story. Um, no, that's the bottle. And my writer brain is like, why? Why couldn't I help fix this? It could be so good. It just needs a little tweaking. Ink pen. This one should be interesting. Um, that's a gun. That's a pipe. That's a screwdriver. Still not a pen. That's a pencil, I think. Wait, is that it? Ah. Okay. Sure. Um, I'm going to go back in the shop room. So the rooms are doubled up, so this is the one we were in before. Some games, not all, and not all newer or older, like it doesn't seem to make a difference on the age. Some games, when they have you going back to the same place again, they, um... They, once you find something, it stays gone. So
so that when you come back the second time, there's less stuff. And I really love it when they do that. But they don't do it as often as um, they do it this way, which is where if you come back, all the stuff is still there. <clears throat> I'm not sure what the difference is like in the thought process. I think it's more realistic if you come back and stuff is the same way it was when you, or, um, when you like there's less stuff because you found some of it. But um, I guess they're not really trying to be super accurate with this stuff. I would like to see how they make them though. I kind of it it sort of looks like it would be fun to to like find all the assets and uh, hide stuff. It would be like playing the game in reverse, um, especially these older ones where you can just put anything anywhere and it doesn't have to make any logical sense. That annoys me in other games, but if I was making it, it would be kind of fun. Is that the other pearl? You. I don't know what you are. That's an egg. Um, in now a game like this, so this has got all kinds of weirdness. There's a girl. It has all kinds of weirdness in it. It doesn't make any sense. When you play games that come later, where um, where you use stuff from the rooms. It gets annoying when rooms are set up like this, where it just doesn't make any logical sense. Because, like, for example, there's a gun, there's some swords. If I needed something, or if I could use one of those items, and I'm looking for it, and there it is, but they won't let me take it, it's like, well, I need a crowbar, and there's a crowbar. If you're going to make me need a crowbar, don't put it in a different place where I can't actually take it from. Um, but again, this one doesn't, you don't use stuff for different rooms, so then it makes sense to just kind of have whatever in the same idea that it doesn't make any sense to just have whatever. I'm not paying attention to ice cream. I want ice cream. Ice cream sounds good, actually. It is in the dinner time area for me. There's a phone receiver on the phone. That's not what you want, though. Old-fashioned phone. Like I said, there's no... Um, I don't even know if there's any touch button phones in here. I don't remember. I don't remember seeing any so far in this run through. We have now gotten to the point where I am completely not paying attention. Oh, a chest right there. Two lions. I didn't see any. Oh. Mm hmm. See? See, that's a lion. Phone receiver. Wine. And you guys are probably like, why don't you just take the thing like a wine bottle that's sitting right there? Okay, that slamming of doors is my child's lion ice cream phone receiver. I sing a lot. Not like professionally or anything, but like in that. Oh, there's a lion! See what I mean about stuff being really hard to find in some of this? So some of you are probably going, I saw that the whole time! Uh, okay, let's go play Energy. This one's fun at least. Oh my gosh, yeah, I'm gonna go back this time. I'm trying to get it within a whole bunch in one spot. Don't know if I'd be better off just chasing what's down. Not that it really matters. Because it doesn't matter if you win these games or not, which is really weird. I think I've ever lost that game. I wonder how low of a score you have to get to lose it. Oh, code lock. We didn't. Oh no, we did do this one. 
Usually when they do these, all of the sounds are different. It's kind of weird that this one doesn't do that. Yeah, we did the puzzle. Oh, we didn't do that one yet. I don't think. I ran to the nearest open room that I could find and slammed the door behind me, hoping it would stave off the terrible cold. It was a cozy room with soft light, desks, cabinets, and a red cross painted on the wall, just like the other rooms I had seen before. Knowing what I had to do, I searched the contents of the desk and found a voice recorder, just like the one in the photographer's room. How do we know what to do? Uh, as, the, as well as prescription glasses and a collection of notepads. They seemed promising at first, but after I sorted through them a bit, I found there wasn't anything in them that was of use to me. I had to dig deeper. It was a black diary that finally seemed to have something interesting to it. This was the first entry. He occupies four rooms. This is a... F oh, Hannah. What is going on in there? I must find out. I will search his room first, and then I will ask my old police fellows about the scientist. The strange thing is that nothing was awry for the first year that he lived here. Not until this captain arrived. Soon after, families started disappearing from the hotel. They didn't check out, I'm sure of it. They disappeared. To be certain, I asked around and no one had seen the guests in question leaving the hotel with their bags or even saying goodbye. I don't know who usually does that in a hotel, but whatever. I suspect the other people are in on this plot as well. A crazy old man from the north, a Siberian shaman. He went into his room once. Is that the same person? A crazy old man from the north. The Siberian shaman. Okay. He went into his room once and didn't come out for over a month. I suspect the priest as well. He visits almost every room. But I thought people were meant to go to him and not the other way around. There is something really mysterious going on here. Even after ten years of being out of the police force, my gut can still sense something is amiss. I'll definitely visit the engineer today. Ooh, excuse me. I knew right away that this man had to be, had to have been a detective. Oh, right. Okay. Duh. Um, and I suspected that he may have been working for the hotel as a private employee. In probing further, I noticed that after that entry, several pages seemed to have been torn from the diary, leaving a large and shocking gap between the first entry and the next. It's madness. I may have no experience in this profession, but he must need some permission for this equipment at least. Much less his experiments. I don't know what's going on here, but I feel that it is wrong and must be stopped. I've discovered that the crazy shaman has connections with the engineer as well as the sea captain. There's definitely some mastermind behind these exploits, but who could it be? The engineer seems to be the most likely candidate. Today I'll just slip into the shaman's room and try to figure out what his role in this. More pages were missing after that, leaving just one more entry that could be read. I understand everything now. He's undertaken this madness. It's already been done. That's why Stein lived here for a year. This is why the crucifixes have appeared all over the walls. There are definitely some dark forces at work here, and I fear that it may have been the devil himself. Now I see their plan completely and have no thought of trying to stop them. Escaping the fate that claimed the others is all I can think about now. The story the diary told raised more questions than answered. What madness had the engineer started? And what did the occult have to do with it? Why was the shaman here? And the sea captain. That too. Okay, let's go to winter. Oh, we are already in winter. Well, we're we missing fall. We are missing fall. Okay, I think we're gonna do this floor. Oh, that's... oh, it's the box. No, I do not want to do the clue right now because it's not really a clue. It's just one of the mini games. Camera. Um, clothing of some sort. I don't know what that is. Books. I don't think so.
<laughs> Alright. Scarf. Toolbox. Button. See, that button was there in the first round. Or Spicy. Thermometer. <laughs> Which I think I went over here. Nope, down there. Ah! Sorry. Sorry. Dang, got it. That is the problem with having two screens open at the same time with the same thing in them. I tried to click on the wrong screen. Um. Dinosaur. Dinosaur. Pipe. Pipe and a kangaroo. Oh. I think this game was made in Europe because of some of the terminology. I wonder if it was made in Australia, though. It could be. Uh, I'm looking for a pipe, and I'm looking for a clock. I wasn't looking for a clock, actually. Now I'm looking for a clock. I still don't see one. Yeah, I don't know if I'd be able to watch a hidden oh, there's a clock. If I'd be able to watch a hidden object puzzle game that someone else was playing, because I would constantly be just yelling at them where everything was. Which in all honesty, if somebody was going to do here, I wouldn't really mind that much. There's a place. Because these hidden object puzzles aren't really that interesting. Alright, should we do Banquet or Bridal? I don't... Oh, the Bridal Street's the crazy one. Let's do this one. <laughs> oh, there's a guitar again. Bells. Like, jingle bells? No. Uh, two birds. There's one bird. And I love you. No. Oh, the heart. That's the I love you. Butterfly. I figured it would be wedding bells and the bird. Oh, there's the other bird. Oh, I didn't find the bonus item. Yeah, I guess I'm getting hungry. So yeah, when this floor is over, we're gonna break for the day. Banquet. Shoes. And shoe, which is different. Um. And a rifle. It might have been a rifle turtle. I wasn't really looking. Turtle. Oh, and Aladdin's lamp. Another Marrakesh. Marrakesh doll? <sighs> Being dyslexic is a pain in the ass, by the way. A little pain in the butt. I'm not allowed to say that. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that if you have my friend day. This is a family friendly. I guess I won't. Um, statue. Footprint. Usually on the walls for some reason. Oh, that's another theory I have going. Not so much with the older ones like this where anything can be anywhere, but in the newer ones, I have a theory that the people making the game tend to hide stuff in places where it would actually be. Um, like, if it's a spoon, it would be on the table type thing without thinking about it. And that if you think about an item, the likelihood is you could find it just by saying, oh, it would be on a flat surface in the front or surface in the front, or it would be on a wall or something like that. So, all right, fine, we'll do this. Uh, no, you know what, we'll leave those till the next time I do this, because 
then I don't have to read the words all over again. Because I think if I go back up to go to the next floor, when I start again, I'll have to read the words, and it would the words, the story, the words of the story. Um. So yeah, we'll do that next time. So I guess this is goodbye. Goodbye to whoever is actually listening to me, which I don't know if there are any people listening to me, but that's fine. Have a spooky evening. No, I don't. I guess I've never ended the video before, so. Also, this isn't very spooky. The story has some problems, though. I kind of want to, like, rewrite it, um, like, fanfic ish -y. And, like, take all the grammatical errors out and maybe flesh it out a little bit more. It's a small story, but it doesn't really explain everything. And I think some, I think the next two games in the series, um, are logically linked. That's what the next one definitely is, is somebody coming and investigating the hotel. And I'm pretty sure the third one also is linked with them investigating the hotel again for some reason. Um, but after that, they're not really connected to this anymore. The only connection is that the story takes place in a hotel. <laughs> so, alright, I will see y'all later. Bye!